Know your total cash holdings, which includes what you have in your brokerage account, your mutual fund account, and things of that nature. So chat with a couple I know very, uh, very near and dear to my heart, Let's, and I won't go further than that. Um, they have a rental and they have some balance on the rental and it's not much just in the two in the two, five figures not the six and uh, she's making you know more a lot more money on the rent than she has to pay in debt to cover the mortgage so it's a good property for her a good investment and she's thinking about refinancing it and it's got tons of equity in there and she just she's just kicking butt and taking names so we get to chatting I said, well, how much cash do you have here on the side? I mean, what, what kind of cash are you sitting on? And she had just enough cash to pay off the debt, all right? And I said, yeah, I don't think I'd do that. Um, but she said if she were able to refinance, she could reduce her payment by half. I said, uh, by stretching out a 10-year loan to a 30? You know, she has 20 years left on the, on the note, and she just she put it into a 30-year it pay out by half and I reduce it by half. I said, oh, that's not a bad opposite. That's not a bad proposition, frankly. So basically you take your debt and you uh, refinance it. Uh, you have a half of as much as your monthly payment. And if you want to make that a 15 or 10, or in this case, a five-year loan, you could do that. So we start chatting about that some. Um, but then it turns out, she, <laughs> we start looking at, her, at their brokerage statements and whatnot. And they got tons of cash in a brokerage statement. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I said, no, pay that sucker off. Don't refinance. Look, you got all this cash sitting here. It's not doing anything. It's in a money market accounts. Uh, that's not, literally, there's no reason to carry any debt when you got this much cash. But this is, this is what I want to be clear on. Cash assets include checking savings and cds yes but also includes cash that you have in your brokerage accounts now not the cash that you have inside a mutual fund so some mutual funds will carry five percent cash or something like that. that that's not cash because you don't have access to that without selling the fund all right but the cash that's in your money market account and your brokerage account that's absolutely accessible that is part of your cash holdings i just want to be very clear on that so don't don't overlook the cash that you have and your brokerage and your investment accounts just because it's you know not the same as the cash at the bank hope that makes sense um in this case i'm saying look you know we're talking they're good folks making good money you know they got big mortgage on that no debt um and we're just talking about like you know what if the market the economy does this that the other so essentially the what i guided them on i said look if you have you pay off your debt you have no debt except the mortgage you pay off the, uh, the, the rental real estate that they have. All right, that's going to free up, you know, 2000 bucks. Uh-oh, 2000 bucks a month. Oh, boy. Here comes a dog, so we're going to have to keep chatting here. Oh, boy. Come here. Let's do over here. That's going to free up $2,000 a month, which they can use to build up their cash holdings. Oh, is that a golden doodle? I love it. Is that a golden doodle? Yeah. Hey, golden doodle. Oh, come on, Pablo. I love golden doodles. Hey, buddy. Anyway, let's turn around now. So I said, no, you, that's going to free up 2000 bucks a month, which you can certainly use to replenish that cash that you had um, that you used to, uh, to pay off the debt for sure. But part two of that is, I said, look, you got you know, S&P 500 index, you know, total stock market index, uh, a bunch of index funds. They have a little bit of international index, whatnot. You got a rental real estate you got, um, and then you got, so you got stocks, you got a little bit of rental real estate, not much, but a little bit. And you got a bunch of cash on the side too. So that way, if the opportunity comes up to buy more real estate, uh, it's there. Or if things go south in a deflationary slash depressionary economy, uh, that cash is going to pay, uh, it's going to look great. So if, for my opinion, I'm like, man, you got the best of both worlds, all right? The only mortgage, the only debt you have is your mortgage. You got stocks and you got cash <laughs> and your positive cash flow. That's exactly what you want. That's like the barbell right there. Because I still think real estate market has opportunity in there for sure. I, I don't care what anybody says. And I'm, I'm certainly able to be wrong. Hell, I've been wrong other than marrying my wife 
everything I've done, but I'm certainly able to be wrong here. But man, you cannot tell me there's not going to be some real estate opportunities that exist. Now, whether or not that's a Vanguard Real Estate Investment Trust, or if you want to get a little more specific in some of these uh, closed-end funds or something like that, uh, that's fine. I would be looking at outer suburban commercial real estate if there is a real estate investment trust for that. I just think, like I said yesterday, that there is opportunity there. But uh, be that as it may. So in this case, real estate or a cash, some rental properties and stocks, man, that is a tough portfolio to beat for sure. As long as you're not taking on more debt, um, <laughs> I man, I would mimic that if I were you. That's the barbell live and in person. But remember, cash in your brokerage account is still cash. All right, we'll see you.